Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we letter a new project every week. And this one is a fun, bonus, special, whatever word you want to add to it, mm -hmm. a, a different type of project that we're doing. We're doing our wood plaque. So this is the quote and the project that we're going to be doing, home is wherever I'm with you. There are six different steps for this one. There's a good amount of one, good amount of steps, but it's all good. First one, we are going to paint our background with bleed proof white. So we're going to paint the background. Second step, there's a practice worksheet that you can download from our, from our website. If you don't have our subscription box at letsmakeart.com, you can get them for free. Join along with us. It's grand. Step two. Step three is I'm going to guide you guys into creating your layout. So if you look at this, you'll notice that it's pretty similar. So whenever you are looking at a blank canvas, a lot of times it might be a little daunting to look at a blank page. So I made this to help get you guys started. That's 3A. 3B, when you're doing this, I'm going to teach you how to draw a banner. So that's what the, um, this is, and there's a square right there. So I'm going to show you that. So that's 3A, 3B. 4 is graphite paper. So this is a work harder, not smarter. Works, dang it. <laughs> I, you saw me think about it. Work smarter, not harder. Work it's harder, in, not smarter. It's an inside joke that is I... Is <laughs> not the best. Yeah, no. no. I want to help you guys. I want to help you help yourself make this easier. <laughs> so grab my papers and be step four, so I'll show you how you can use that. Step five is the black gouache, and then step six is display this loud and proud. Be proud of what you make. That's the whole point of being here with us. That's why there's six steps. <laughs> what a great sixth step. Right? I've never done that. I was like, I want people to know that you can, we're making this, this is something very different and I want you to be able to show it and hang it around your home. That's why I chose a homey quote. Okay, let's get started. For your wood background, we're not gonna get started actually. I'm gonna show you one other thing. <laughs> um, so, there are options. So you have your wood plaque that, also if you don't have our subscription box, you can buy the kit on our website. So you can do that and then watch this video along with us. But it is a blank, it's a, I don't know what kind of wood you'd say this? Birch, kind of. It's like a pine, it's a really porous wood. Pine, okay, pine wood. So the color is just lighter. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do this project and we're gonna make it white and then add black on top of it. But another thing they wanna show is this is, I use wood stain. I don't know if we're doing overhead or, <laughs> I don't wanna spill. <laughs> um, it's, <laughs> um, it's wood stain. And so I really like wood stain. Um, a lot of, if you have, if you wanna change the color of your wood, um, you can get that. We do not sell that, unfortunately. Um, but you can get them at Home Depot, Home Depot stores, Home Improvement type of stores. Um, so you would do that. And then we're gonna be using Bleed Proof White. So if you did wanna do a project like this, you can do your lettering with the white. So I just wanted to show that you have options. This is your wood plaque to design. Um, just wanted to say that in the beginning. Okay, now let's get started. I wanna add real quick, with wood finish or wood stain, if you've never used it, when you are done with your cloth or whatever you use, don't leave it in a pile because it can eventually, potentially, catch on fire on its own. On its own? Yes, I've seen it happen. So be careful with it, uh, and it does stain everything as well. It does. It will stain your hands a lot. Thank yeah. you for explaining that. That was, yeah. It's, I didn't realize it was flammable. It's really, just, it is flammable, and that's why we can't send it to people. Yeah, we would want to, but. That would be great. Walk to your drive, walk to your store, and then do it, and then show us. Okay, thanks for adding that, <laughs> because I didn't even know that. You taught me something. Not that I would, I, but what if I leave my paint, I paint my brush. It's when it's like in a, because usually cloth. what you use is when it's with a cloth, Yeah. or a torn t-shirt works really well, but if okay, you leave you that in a small pile, and uh, just leave it there, Yeah. if it's in a container, or even on its own, in an open space, if it doesn't have enough, ventilation, it can catch fire. It almost has to be a perfect scenario, but it's still something you want to watch out for. <laughs> Pro tip. 
be careful when using wood stain. Um, I realized I did not say the supplies. So we're going to be using, I'm not going to do the same thing. We can just do a, a thing. Black gouache, which has dried out because I have did this earlier. It's okay, I'll show you how you can reawaken it. Black gouache, bleed proof white. I'm going to be using, you can use either of our brushes that we have, either the round zero or this is the medium aquash brush. I would also have, I'm going to use a wide brush to paint my wash, as you'll see. So that's another option to have the graphite paper. And then I also suggest to have um, blue painter's tape, which we'll use when we're using the graphite paper. Okay, so for bleed proof white, it comes, if you have a box, in a little jar like this. And bleed proof white is an opaque version of watercolors. If you don't have bleed proof white, and also if you want to make your background a different color, you can also buy acrylic. Um, so acrylic paint is another base coat that you can use. You don't have to use bleed proof white. It was more, it came in our box, so I wanted to use it up. Um, so you can use any color if you want to use that. Just use acrylic paint. So I scooped up a good amount on here because we're going to be painting the whole wash. So I'm using my wide brush and I'm just going to dip in some water. So I want to make this, this is really cool because if you guys like the, is it called something like a light wood wash where it's white on top so it's a little bit see-through? That's what we're going for. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's a wash. Is it just called yeah, a wash? because we do that with brick too. So oh. Just do a white wash. That's pretty. Yeah, it is really cool. Yeah. So. This one was a little bit more opaque because I want to show you different options, but what you can do is you're going to add a good amount of water, mix it all in, and then we're just going to paint. So you can see when I'm painting, it's transparent, and maybe even blend it in. So if you want to get very um, precise, you can tape the sides of your um, plaque, wood plaque, so that you don't paint over it. I'm just gonna do this pretty quickly. And it's nice when you have a wider brush, you can do that. Can I add another thing? Yes, please do. So with the stain again, you said with the tape too, but if you're gonna tape anything off, be ready for it to bleed past the tape because of how porous the wood is. So no matter Even what, Even with, with this or wood stain? I don't know about the bleed proof white, but I know for sure the stain. Yeah. I, because I stained a couple done, of these yeah. wood before. Oh yeah. And uh, they just bled right through. I think with the bleed, well, I guess it depends on how watery your bleed proof white is. Um, it's also, yeah. Either way, it's going to be pretty. But that's a great tip to know that it might happen. It's kind of the same when we do it on other projects. It's sometimes, paint, painters, so painter's tape, we haven't really even talked about this. Painter's tape is for, isn't that what, obviously what painters use, um, instead of masking tape. And the reason why is because it lifts off easier, or that's what I understand. Um, it lifts off easier, and scotch tape won't, it will bubble up and it won't stay exactly. So that's why we use painter's tape. Um, I don't know why it's blue. That'd be an interesting fun fact. I will look it up. Okay, do it. Because we use that all the time. Okay. So you can decide when you're doing this. I'm moving pretty quickly. How saturated or opaque you want your white to be. The other thing, because you're, if you're doing multiple layers, you can tell. So when I'm looking at this, I can see my white right there where I kind of stopped. So what I would do if that bothers you, I would just add a little bit more layer to it. Oops. When I do that, I'm just going to blend it out. So then there's no harsh line. So we could do this for a while. Okay. Can you tell that's white or should I do it darker, Keenan? I can tell. It's like that white wash. Yeah. Like talked about those too. It's I love it. Not opaque. And even actually when you look at white wash, that look of, or um, wood white wash, it kind of does have, there's like patches of, it being a little bit darker in places. 
So actually, if no one's ever painted with this guy, you'll notice that I'm not, even I have paint, so when I'm dipping, I am dipping in here. But when I'm doing it, I'm actually using both sides. So I'm going back and forth rather than just painting like this and moving into it because that's what you naturally think. Allow yourself to kind of let it move and I'm doing bigger strokes, which is something that we don't do a lot in lettering. So I know this might feel a little bit different, but have fun with it. This is your time to learn. Okay, I like that. Did you find out? I did, I found yeah. out a couple facts. Okay, go. Because I assumed correctly about the blue, it's a marketing thing to differentiate from other masking tapes. Wow. Now the other difference is that there's a price difference. So the painter's tape is a little more expensive, but it also than comes masking? off cleaner than masking tape. Yeah. It doesn't tear as easily. So that's why paint, yeah. Yeah. That I think I masking definitely paper is thinner. It is thinner barely. too, yeah. yeah. It feels similar, so that's why, I mean, so you can use masking tape. Um, but yeah, painter's tape. Something I grew up with in all my art classes. I don't know why, I was just... Tape? Yeah. It's super useful. But, marketing ploy. I mean, they're smart. <laughs> they actually, 3M actually owns that color tape. Wow. Yeah. They own that color. Medium blue. It's a good blue. This is what we're talking about. You're just doing it. We're talking about blue painters tape. Okay. Welcome to the <laughs> um, That's step one. So like I said, you can make, make it uh, a more opaque white if you want. Um, I'm gonna let that sit and dry. So you can tell, I don't know if you can see both of these in the shot. This, I did a lot thicker of a quote, or a quote, a coat, and I did multiple layers. Um, whereas this one, I just did a light one, just to show you the difference. Okay, with your practice worksheet. So this is something that, like I said, we have on our website, but I am going to do it. I realized I think when I painted this, I did it in watercolor. So if you have your watercolors, because that's what this box is all about, you can totally go through this worksheet if you want with your watercolors. You also can use it with the gouache that we're gonna be using if you wanna to start to get used to how to paint with it. It's a good practice for this. Um, so what's happening, black gouache also comes in a similar jar that we have and it looks like that. And if we were to even do this, it won't move. So it's pretty thick. Don't do that just in case yours was a little watery. <laughs> Mine wasn't watery, but I would hate if yours was watery and you tried to do this and it spilled everywhere. So don't do that at home. <laughs> um, okay, so mine, like I was saying, can, is this in the shot? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, I touched it. But mine is pretty dry. Um, so I might need to add a little bit more water than I'm used to. But what I'm doing is I'm just transferring water over. And I'm going to mix it all in. So we are not creating a, it's not exactly watercolor consistency it's going to be a little bit thicker but the problem is that if i were to paint directly if i didn't add water it'd be too thick so when you're doing this worksheet this is just shows the thin upshots that you can make wow this is a good lesson when you're looking at this brush now do you see all those fun hairs yep. if i were to paint it's not that noticeable but you would have all those hairs so to get rid of that whether whatever brush you're using, roll, bend and snap, roll and twist <laughs> um, into the palette to make it more of a pointed tip and get it back to its original shape. So you're gonna draw thin upstrokes by lightly grazing and then thick downstrokes by pushing harder. I'm noticing that it's a little bit too thick and this is why we are practicing, it's a little bit too thick, so I just wanna add a little bit more water. I also want to mention I'm using this aquash brush. I do not have any water in here. You can use it that way. This is a little bit wet still. Um, I just have a glass of water because I can control it easier. So that's personal preference. So when you're doing this, I helped and I made little guidelines. So the whenever you see a dot, that's where I want you to start a new stroke. So especially because we're gonna be drawing a little bit bigger on this project, I wanted to create this exercise to really remind you that lettering is different than your handwriting. So when you're handwriting, usually you just write notes and scribble and you do it really fast. 
Hand lettering, we are drawing letters. So I want you to break it down and take it stroke by stroke. So when you're looking at this, this is an H, but I'm gonna take it in three different strokes. I'm gonna go slow. So I'm gonna go thick on the down, thin on the up. That's one stroke. That's two. And I'm gonna start at this dot and come across. So it'll be really noticeable. I'll show you on the M. So I see my dot there. I'm gonna go thick. So one, two, three. Rather than, if I were to do the M again, I didn't really, I didn't, I did it really quickly and didn't think about that, you would lose the thin and thick variance. So that's how if you're trying to train yourself and you want to learn this, that's a big tip is try and go slower and really break it down. Um, I'm actually not going to go this go through this entire worksheet. You can pause and you can go through this on your own. Um, just know that, like I said, if it's if the gouache is too thick and you can't paint with it, add a little bit more water to thin it out. Okay. Three. When you have practiced your lettering, now it's time for you to design your own quote um, or design your project. You can use the quote that I am doing or if you'd like to pick your own quote. If you'd like to do the same quote, here's my outline for you guys. Um, I wanted to mix it up. I thought it'd be cool if we just tried out. So this is um, a grid that I created. So the reason why I have this little hump is that when I draw out home, I can know that my letters, my, the baseline is going to come up a little bit like that instead of being straight right here. Another tip is that while I was doing this is kind of see actually, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna fold this in half and you can use this as your center line. So I thought about this because it works nicely with home because there's four letters. So if you split it up and maybe I even draw the M here and then draw so I know that the O, maybe I make my O a little bit bigger to fit in here. Or when you look at it, I don't have my big eraser. When you're looking at this, I realize that even though this is my center line, I don't know if you guys can see it. The M got kind of skinny right here, so it's okay if you overlap it. But by having that middle guideline, it might help you to create more of a, think of it as a grid and space it out evenly. Okay, so you can mix up when you're doing this. I want you to see maybe, I did that in a block font, but I'm gonna do this in a script. Um, so you can make this your own. How to draw a banner. There are three or four steps. We'll see. Step one, I'm going to do this one and I'm going to curve. So it's a curved banner rather than a straight one. So what I did is I drew a curve going up and then going down and then I mimicked it so it's parallel. So think of it as a windy road so it also goes up and then goes down. Then I'm gonna draw the flag parts, so these parts right here. And to do that, I'm gonna draw a line here and a line here. And then I want to draw another, the other, the top. So this is the bottom and this is the top. I'm gonna to eyeball it and try and make it, typically if you want, you can either choose to make it kind of similar this got kind of close actually i'm going to move this down then um so what we're thinking is that this spacing eyeball it and have it be pretty similar it doesn't need to be exact but pretty similar um if you made it smaller it's actually not wrong it just creates a different look so it'll look like the back part of the flags are further away because as you get farther away, things get a little bit smaller. Um, so it just, it, it's not wrong. It'll just create a different look. Okay, do that to the same side. So I'm gonna add the top, add the sign. So it's coming off right there. And then draw the bottom of that. And then draw the flag part. Okay, so that's two. Three, draw from the corner 
I did that really fast, sorry. Draw from the corner to the other corner. The corner, so the end, so the beginning and the end of your front banner to the corner of your side banner. Then, let's see. The final step is I'm gonna add a shadow. So when I'm looking at this, I drew my line. If you guys can see, I drew my line because I was using the guideline of my rectangle, but I actually need to extend this so that it hits the top of my banner. So then this triangle, you color in. So the same thing, I need to bring that up a little bit. Color that in. There's a banner. Okay. I didn't say this while I was doing this, but I'm going to say this now. You can decide where your flags go. This one has it like it's curving like that. So maybe you're, all your flags are at the bottom here, or maybe you're all at the top there. Personal preference, design it how you'd like. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do this pretty quickly. So I'm just drawing. This is why I use a pencil, because I need to move this over a tad bit. Where ever. Okay. So I'm, I decided to mix it up. I did some script, some block. You will do this a lot slower than I am. Just doing this quickly for you. Wherever I'm with you. Okay. So now that you have this big one, maybe you decide that you want you to be in block font like that, which that looks really cool too. Or if you want to do it in a script, what I did was I, let's see, I made a loop at the bottom. So what I was looking at and why I kind of moved a little bit was I was eyeballing, what I'm looking at is my top spacing here and my bottom spacing here. They do not need to be exact but, let me show you. It is the reason why when I was designing this that I added that flourish at the bottom to have to fill in more of that space. Because if you look at this, if I were to do just, let's pretend I did a really short Y, even though it looks really funny. <laughs> a stumpy one. It's stumpy Y. <laughs> um, but if you visually look at this, this spacing is a lot smaller, whereas this spacing is a lot bigger. So it looks like this quote kind of should be shifted down a little bit. Um, so in order to help yourself, you can break this apart and fill in, and I just made a curl at the end, fill in that space. So now visually, even though this part of the Y is still bigger or top, bigger than this space, by just filling this in, your eye will help, let's not do the math for you, but it will help you um, visually see it rather than, it's not gonna, how do I say this? What am I trying to say? It's, it'll, fill in this, it'll fill in the spaces. Your eye will not be like, I see that big hole because you drew something that kind of glides into it. Um, it's also why I don't like to draw harsh lines because when you do have harsh lines, for example, if this was a harsh like that, your eye might see that a lot more. So that's why whenever we draw flourishes, I like to have them be more organic and flowy rather than harsh lines. Does that make sense? Arch oh, harsh lines. Harsh. Arch lines? Arch lines. <laughs> harsh. Okay. So that's... You explained it famously. Okay, thank you. I needed to think about it for a second to get my point across. Okay, that was three A and B. Done. Four, graphite paper. So if, not if, you will have this. This will be completely dry. It's mine's not completely dry. <laughs> but please. It's okay. We're going to go for it, or maybe we'll, I think we'll be okay. You at home will wait till it's completely dry. I'm gonna go for it and see what happens. Um, there's actually a couple more steps, so maybe it'll dry in a minute. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Um, okay, so when you were doing this, you did all the hard work designing this beautifully. 
you can use a pencil and do it all over again on here. However, you also have graphite paper that came in your kit or your box. And the beautiful thing is that we are going to transfer our design onto here. The other beautiful thing is that this project um, is black lettering, so we will go over our pencil line, so you won't see it at all. So what I suggest doing is using scissors to, I'm cutting out the shape of my outline. If you don't have scissors, fold. Make it work with what you have. The whole reason is that it will help. It's easier to have this exact shape. We'll see if this works. I designed it so that, boom, that it's the same. Hold on, I'm rethinking something. If, we might be okay. Yeah, we're fine. My thought was that if you have two, if these folds got in the way of the paper, then you might not be able to see through or to trace over, but we're good. Okay. So when you're doing this, blue painter's tape, why we were talking about blue painter's tape. When you're using this, I suggest putting, maybe I'm gonna do it both ways. The reason why is that this is such a big paper, so I have no idea. I can feel my way around, but I don't really know where my wood is underneath. So if I put it here and here. Graphite paper, down. Dark side, down. This paper, I guess. What if you fold that paper around the plaque? That would work too. Because then you could actually use the plaques in your hand as weight. The thing is that this, I guess I'm assuming, I designed it the same exact size, but I think when it gets printed, it's a little bit smaller. So it's not exactly the same, just so you guys know, it's not the exact same as the size plaque. I know when I designed it, it was, but see how it's a little bit smaller? because the edge of my plaque is right here. So it's just a tad, it's like an eighth of an inch. Really tiny. But that was a good thought, King. Okay, so if I line this up, we tape this. So what we're gonna do is we are going to transfer our design to the other side. When you're using graphite paper, it's a pretty, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but it just try not, it'll smudge a little bit. So try not to move it around so much. Um, the graphite will transfer really easily, especially because you're using white. Um, if you have a felt tip pen, actually, Sarah taught me this, that it's a really good um, way to not, actually, it doesn't matter on this one. Use whatever you have, ignore what I just said. Use whatever you have. The tip is that if we were doing this on watercolor paper and it was a little bit too transparent, you use the other side of this Tombow Dual Brush Pen that we've been learning with um, last, last semester, last quarter, um, and it won't transfer the design as hard, harshly. But for us, it actually doesn't matter because we're gonna be painting over in black. I am going to do this only a few times, but the first time I do it, I actually want to make sure it's working. So, can they see that? I'm gonna move that over. We need to wait. This is good trial and error. What's happening is that this is not completely dry, and so I tried to work faster and I just need to cool my jets. <laughs> Um, and so you could see when I was drawing the HO, <laughs> the HO of home. <laughs> um, also Santa Claus's theme. <laughs> um, it picked up the, some of the paint that was still dry. So we're going to push pause. Well, it'll, when we edit this, it'll be fine. But Snack we're break. Pause. Snack break. Okay, bye. We're back. <laughs> we took a 
long pause. Um, it was probably an hour plus. Um, but the reason why, if you're just tuning in, you're like, what just happened? Um, I did my, my white wash and then it was still damp. So I tested a few times and we are good. So it's completely dry. It's grand. Um, the, so like you can see, the graphite from here, the lead from here, just kidding, the graphite from here transferred over. <laughs> the lead sheet. <laughs> the lead sheet. The graphite, tran the pencil chain, you can just say that, transferred onto my wood. So now I'm gonna finish it up so you guys can just see what I was doing. Um, like I said, because my first try didn't work very well. So what I'm doing is I'm just tracing over. You can press, it doesn't matter how hard you're pressing because you, we are going to go back over this in black. So just trace back over. You are helping yourself by doing this because, boom. Now step five, we are going to paint this. Um, Does that transfer pretty easily? Yeah. It's dreamy. That was easy. Nice. Super easy. You were, were you pressing very hard? I was pressing fairly hard. I think because I was overcompensating for our past time. Oh. Um, so yes, I pressed pretty hard so that also I want you camera here and here to feel here to see what I'm doing. Um, okay. Black gouache. Gouache, I think I already said this, is an opaque version of watercolor. Um, but you can paint with it. So I don't want to add too much water to make it watercolory because if you're looking at this, it's a pretty opaque color. So I just need enough. Let's see how it is. It had a little bit more. So I just want it to be a liquid consistency so I can paint with it. Again, like you saw in the beginning, I'm rolled or I twisted into the side to get a sharp point. So when you're doing this, you are literally just tracing. I can see this line right here that just happened while I was painting because when I painted down, um, the tip came off like that. So if you want to color this in, you can, if that happens to you. Um, I, as a teaching lesson, and as I want to show you guys, when you're looking at this at the end, Ooh, this is like 5A then. Um, I want to do a, um, a highlight. So I'm going to make my thick down strokes or just my strokes in general a little bit thicker than my first pass at it. So if you do want to do that as well, just paint off to the side a little bit and thicken up your lines. It's personal preference how thick or thin you want your lines to be. If at any point, like right now, if you look at this, it is, it's kind of scratchy. So that tells me I need to add just a little bit more water to be able to paint. I'm gonna go back this way. There we go. So that's a more smooth line. The other tip that I wanted to give while you're painting this before we just fast forward through the whole thing, cause it's gonna be the same. You're just gonna dip in is if you notice by this time, one, I'm on my E, my hand, I can I can kind of awkwardly paint. Oh, I guess I can turn it. You can turn it. But what the tip I can give you is that if you're struggling, you're at the end and you're like this and your hand is it's on the table. So you're kind of awkwardly having to paint. The tip is find something that is at a similar height. Um, I can't. We're going to pretend you wouldn't have two wood planks, so I'm not going to do that. You put that plate upside down. Does that work? Uh, do you have a square plate? I'm just kidding. I do not. What about a roll of paper towels? I don't. I think that's too thick. <gasps> what about a bottle? No, 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 no. A book? A very specific book? <laughs> this is not an advertisement for my book but there's a book called by hand that you can get on our website. <laughs> that was not the reason this were, well, I was just, I just need something flush. That's better. I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, that's good. So it's because, so my hand has a support system essentially. Yes, that feels great. If it is too watery,
So you notice, um, you won't be able to tell from, I'm just gonna do on here, you won't be able to tell from the camera. But what would happen is if it's too watery, which is why I wanna show you guys to try not to, to try to avoid that, is if it's too watery, it one, it'll show up more transparent, but two, it's not happening here. It will feather out. So what's happening is because wood, like Heenan said, is more porous, especially this type of wood, is more porous, um, you, it, the ink will just spread into all the holes that it can, and because there's so many with a porous wood, it does that. Um, so to remedy that, just maybe you need to have your black gouache handy, and if it ever feels like that, add more gouache and you're good. Okay, I think we can just fast forward. I'm gonna go for it. We good with that? Just trace, you're just tracing. You can do this. This is when you say, put us into warp speed number two. Is that from a movie that I That's don't know? That's like Star Trek phrase. I've, I'm sure I've missed some of the words, but. <laughs> Please put us in the warp phrase. Warp, warp, warp phrase? Feed. Warp, warp, is that a phrase? Warp, please put us in the warp feed. Bye. Warp speed off. <laughs> so, I also wanted to say that I am using the aquash brush. And so you guys notice, I was, whenever you're painting something small, no matter if it's with gouache or if it's watercolor, um, you want to press really lightly to create a thin stroke. I tried to do that and it's still a little bit thicker than I'd like it to. So if that's the case, and if you have, if you have your other brush, if you don't, then just try and be really mindful of um, your thin stroke. But I wanted to show you also that you can, this is my round zero. You can use this brush, which is, if you can see both of them, it's a lot smaller. So it'll just be easier for me to paint a thin stroke and just use the tip. Ran out of ink right there. So if you do, maybe I need to start back up here. Okay, so you can tell that that's a lot thinner line even on this one. Maybe I'll show you the difference. Let's see if I can do it again. So I'm gonna try and do a thin stroke as well using this. I'm just using the tip. Oh, maybe because I'm focusing more. <laughs> so you can do either one. Whichever one you wanna do. Um, I just wanted to, uh, to pause and show you that. So now turn on again. done. I did all my gouache lettering. Um, I wanted to use this as a teaching opportunity to show you guys. So I actually, I tried to erase. You can see right here. So when I did this, when I was tracing, don't need this anymore. When I was tracing my outline that I did, actually, you know what's funny? I did trace it, right? That was just personal preference. So what I did was I traced it and this line came up a little bit high. For some reason, when I was painting, I was like, mm, I want to make it lower. So I did. <laughs> and I was trying to erase it. So because this is white um, and it's a pencil line that is pretty hard there because I pressed so hard, you can kind of see it. I'm just working through it and erasing it really lightly. So you can lightly erase. Um, don't go too crazy because you also don't want to smudge everything. But as a lesson going through this, if um, you're going to use graphite paper again, just try and be a little bit more mindful, especially when you have a thin stroke. So it didn't really matter when I had my thick lines, but when I had really small lines, even like right here a little bit, um, you can see it. So just be a little bit more careful then. And that's also why I, um, I usually don't press very hard with graphite paper, but it's all good. We're gonna keep going. This is 5A. The part that I realized I didn't say was I'm going to show you guys how you can just add a little highlight. Um, 
Oh, it's raining. I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna use bleed proof white. I'm gonna get a new glass of water. Not that it would make a big difference, but that water is very muddy. And interesting enough, if you guys can see, my bleed proof white, because we spent a lot of time waiting, is, wow. Well, it's a little bit, but it's completely dry, super crusty. It's okay, you can reawaken it. Grab your water. I hope that that sound bite of you saying wow is saved. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I do that a lot. So you guys can see, I don't, hopefully you can see, that it is starting to come back to life. I just added water. You'll have to kind of rub back into it. And the good thing is, if this happens to you, at least in this point, we don't need very much. So I'm gonna roll back into it, I just wanna twist. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little highlight. So I'm just gonna draw a line right there on the downstrokes of these letters. And when I'm doing this, I did this um, a little bit different, but do it here is I am drawing, it might not be um, as noticeable, but especially if you look at this one and even this one, I drew a line and then the tail end of it, I tapered it off. So instead of just having a sharp point, if you think about it, when you're looking at the shape of this, it goes thin, thick, and then thinner down here. So what you're doing is your highlight is going to mimic that shape. So maybe on this one, I just have a straight line I personally don't like that. It's also style preference because I want to mimic the same highlight shape. So even though that stroke isn't going down, I'm just going to go like that. The other thing is that this is so much, it, I had a lot more paint apparently when I um, painted this. And the reason I, the way I can tell is that this is a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to go back over this and add another swoop to it. And you can do this on this one, but I'm just going to leave it with that home, emphasize home. Um, maybe you add, did I do this on this one? No, you can add, oh, pause. Well, what, I'm gonna finish my sentence. You can add a shadow if you want. Um, you add a black shadow to it, just pick your light source. But really quickly, my O statement was, I did not color in my banner. Let me do this really quickly just to show you guys what the final product would look like. So I'm coloring these triangles so because it's the shadow or the behind the part. So now that banner pops up a lot more. Now I'm done. <laughs> um, thank you everyone. I'm excited to see what you made. Um, if you just popped in, we were making a, a sign. Oh, step six, hang up loud and proud. Put this on your mantle, maybe um, show your friends. The, the interesting thing about art is that we wanna kind of keep it to ourselves. You're kind of like, oh, I don't know if that was good enough. Um, you get in your head a lot of times. Just put it on display for someone to see. Show one person that you think will enjoy it. And it will show you that making something by your hand is so powerful and so special and it's something that you can't buy. Money can't buy that. So I'm really proud of you guys for stepping through this or for stepping into this and going through it with me. Um, we have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Lettering. That's a very warm community. Come join it if you're not a part of it. Show us what you make and I'll see you next week.